My name is Richard Gilbertson. So, um, so I want to tell you a little bit about my personal relationship um, and how it relates to brain tumours and my personal career path, and then a bit about the Tessagel Brain Cancer Mission. So, uh, as Jack's already said, I'm a paediatric neuro-oncologist by training, so I trained in the UK. My good friend Steve Clifford, we did our PhDs together, um, so you'll meet them later on. Um, so I began life as a, as a medical doctor, but in my second week of medical school, when I was doing my uh, first clinical attachment, I met the parents of a girl who was dying of a medulloblastoma. This was back in 1986. And I had the quite horrific experience of watching that little girl die. And her name was Katie. And at that point, I was so incensed that we could do nothing in 1986, even though that seems like a lifetime ago, that we couldn't do anything for this child. And actually, that same week, I was in the pub with my best friend, Nigel, who became my best man when I got married. And Nigel, as usual, on a Friday night was a bit drunk, and he'd passed out. And then he suddenly woke up and he pointed at me, and he said, Richard, it doesn't matter what you do with a career, you have to be responsible for a 15% reduction in mortality of any disease. And then he collapsed. So which is a bit of a sort of impressive thing on a, on a sort of night out on a Friday. But that stuck with me. And then that same week, I was actually in a Tate gallery, and I saw a painting called The Doctor. I don't know if anyone has seen that. But there's a, a, a distraught... Um, uh, there's a picture of a distraught child who's really sick with a doctor sort of facing his 18th century pictures nothing much this doctor can do but in the corner is a distraught family a mother and a child and those three things had a profound effect on me and actually back in 1986 I started working on medulloblastoma and I've worked on it ever since I spent 15 years in the States where I set up a lab working on brain tumours uh, and I ended up, so I was at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which is the world's largest children's cancer hospital. And I ended up uh, working there as the Scientific and Cancer Center Director. Just to put it in context, I'm not allowed to manage our budgets at home, but I had a budget of $1.2 billion a year. So that sort of seems a bit incongruous. And Paul, who's on our SAB, uh, works at St. Jude. So that's a bit about my background. So, but I wanted to tell you a little about the Tessa Jowell Brain Cancer Mission. So who's heard of the Tessa Jowell Brain Cancer Mission? Hands up, great, lots of people. So what is it, and why do we need yet another brain cancer effort? I wanted to start by really thanking, first of all, the Brain Tumor Charity. I think in this country, the Brain Tumor Charity is a phenomenal organization, which brings together um, really outstanding scientists from across the world, gets them to work with UK scientists and doctors, but also is heavily engaged with patients first, and the community here speaks to that tonight to really end suffering from brain tumors. And though Sarah's not here, I would like to give her an entire team a round of applause just to thank her for the efforts that they put in. <laughs> and then the other thing I'd like to do is that we have a fantastic scientific advisory board and we work very hard. We get paid an enormous amount for doing this. We don't get paid anything. So, um, but we do this in our spare time and we do it for a passion to make sure that the hard earned money and raised money are spent <clears throat> appropriately. Now, you'll meet two of those people tonight. You'll meet Susan and Colin. But I would like all the SAB members who are here to stand up, and I'd like us to applaud them, to thank them for the efforts that they put in. So thank you. So that's Steve, Colin, yes, Paul, Susan, and Ken at the back. So the Tessa Jar Brain Cancer Mission was founded really from a sort of trinity of events that happened. So... Um, it was really, it, so what is it? It's a convening organization. It's not raising money, and it's not giving out money. Cancer Research UK, the Brain Tumor Charity, and other charities across the UK, they're set up to do that. So why do we need the Brain Tumor Charity, the Tessa Jowell? Why do we need the Tessa Jowell Brain Cancer Mission? And the reason being is that it's a convening organization which brings together patients, professionals, alongside a government, particularly in charities, to bring the skill sets that those individuals bring to end suffering for brain tumors. And what I'm particularly excited about is the massive progress that's been made by the collaborative effort that's happened across those different bodies. So if you think about government, charities, patients, professionals, they all have different skill sets. They all have different spheres of influence. All of those together can have a massive impact on the um, ending that suffering for brain tumors. And that's what it's about. It's about bringing those entities together. And so what we've done is we've formed four strategic programs, each of which are designed specifically to put patients first and end suffering associated with brain tumors. 
So one of those is patient-centric. It's about clinical trials. And Colin Watts is an expert in clinical trials design. He's a neurosurgeon. He was at Cambridge, saw the light, now has moved to Birmingham. I'm at Cambridge. And so Colin is professor of neurosurgery at Birmingham. And that's a fantastic new entity, the Brain Matrix, which Colin's going to talk to you about, about providing access to the most advanced therapeutics to patients across the NHS. Just as an aside, I worked in the States for 15 years. The NHS is fantastic. It is a phenomenal organization. It's a single party payer system where an entire population is treated uniformly in a single system. The country needs to wake up and understand the power of that and what it's worth for drug companies. If you're a drug company in an international conglomerate and you want to run a clinical trial and a therapeutic, there's no better entity than a 70 plus million pa patient population. And the brain tumor charity is leading the charge in that in brain tumors on our behalf, which is fantastic. So that's Colin's effort. The next effort is in science. Steve Pollard can't be with us tonight. He's a professor of stem cell biology and regenerative medicine in Edinburgh. And that's looking at the basic science of what knits the brain together, the kind of stuff that my lab does in Cambridge. But Steve's leading, leading that from Edinburgh. And very excitingly, while we're pretty crap in this country at treating brain tumors, as is everybody across the world, it's not unique to this, we have the world's best neuroscience con um, uh, community. You might not know that, but some of the world's best neuroscientists are here in the UK. They understand how the brain is knitted together, how it's formed, and therefore what goes wrong. And we have some of the best um, workers in Alzheimer's disease, for example, in um, ALS, in multiple sclerosis. And the same mechanisms that are involved in those things going wrong are almost certainly involved in brain tumors. So that science community is putting together what we call a sandpit, where we're putting to bringing out all of those outstanding leaders in neuroscience, and we're going to start seasoning their labs with postdocs and PhD students working on brain tumors, which is really exciting to sort of cut across um, and use their expertise, which has been established over decades, to start working on brain tumors. And actually, we've just got a, a, um, an application going forward in which two uh, of the world's leading neuroscientists who've never worked on brain tumors before are now going to start working on them. That's very cool. The other aspect is in training. So if you're Susan, and you'll meet Susan later on, you're very familiar in the US of having what we call neuro-oncologists. You'll know that people who, who specialize on treating patients with brain tumors. It might shock you to know, perhaps not this audience, that we don't have those in the UK. We don't have a dedicated group of doctors who only treat brain tumors. In fact, our Royal Colleges don't specialize or recognize that as a subspecialty, which is atrocious. So we're going to change that. So Sarah Jeffries, who's in Cambridge, who's a radiation oncologist specializing in brain tumors, is setting up the UK's first national fellowship program, which is going to take people at the end of their training and do a boot camp over a period of two years, taking them through outstanding aspects of neuro-oncology and, and really giving them a fantastic training. The idea is to pull those individuals into neuro-oncology. And the next step is then to work with the Royal Colleges to say these are a subspecialty that needs to be recognized and you get credentialed in it. And it's a short step from that to actually having neuro-oncologists, radiation oncologists, and neurosurgeons, which Colin's involved in, who are only specializing in pediatric brain tumors. So that's the clinical trial side, the research side, and the training side. And the last side is run by, uh, by um, Sarah Linzel from this charity, and that's the patient outreach aspect. And all of these programs are designed to link up. So one of their main thrusts is something called the, the uh, multidisciplinary team approach. So when you go into um, a hospital with a certain disease, we're very used, whether it's diabetes or whether it's um, you know, a neurodegenerative disease, you're used to having a team approach where there'll be a special nurse, um, a special surgeon, perhaps a special clinician, a special imager who's used to only focusing on those diseases. And our passion is that every single hospital in this country that specializes in brain tumors will have one of those teams. And that's what we're putting together. And the reason why that's crucial if you think about having that team in place, that will be critical for our clinical trials that Colin's going to lead. It's going to be crucial for understanding the training to link up those individuals. And our vision is that we will start to actually provide hospitals with a Tessagile badge, if you like a brand, that will go on the door of the hospital and say, you're a Tessagile center. You're actually um, equipped to treat brain tumors appropriately. And this charity has a major role, leading role in playing that effort. So by bringing all those individuals together with government, I spent the last uh, six months, eight months, writing the long-term plan for the NHS for the next 10 years. 
the only effort um, actually mentioned in, by name is the Teshadal Brain Cancer Mission in the Brain Tumor Charity. Of all cancers, which is really exciting. I didn't have anything to do with that, of course. But, um, but the brain tumors are singled out in that as an absolute effort. So that's fantastic. So that's really what the brain tumor charity, the, the um, Tessagel Brain Cancer Mission is about, is to bring together government and um, patients, professionals, and charities to work together to make sure that each of their efforts um, is, is successful. And we've already said as a, as a mission that our success will be measured by the fact that all of the strategic objectives of the partners will be met. So if the brain tumor charity's um, strategic objectives are accelerated, that will mean the mission has been successful. And that's critically important that we're not sort of competing with each other, but we are simply a convening effort that's making those relationships between government and charities, patients and professional bodies.